Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is Namio. Hola, and uh, I'm Namio, and what kind of cop does not carry a freaking handcuff key? I know. Oh my god. On the one oh hand- my god. Okay. What the hell, Anna? Okay, on the one hand, wait, are we talking her handcuffs or Dante's handcuffs? Um, oh, well, okay, Dante had an excuse. Because he'd been kidnapped. Well, no, yeah, but 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 would Anna have a key to... How do, do handcuff keys just universally work on one another, or what? Pretty, pretty much, yeah. I did not know this. <laughs> I will, yeah. I didn't know this. Uh, although I will say, you know, rule of cool, blow, you know, shooting the chain to, to, um, to, to help uh, break Dante free, and then later Robin, I, I, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, you know, Jason had an excuse for using a gun. Yeah. Because, you know, he'd come back from the dead and been, you know, locked up in the hospital, blah, blah, blah. And he's less likely to have a key. Anna has no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks, it's one of those oversights that the writers seem to have had. All, just everywhere. Although I'm willing to bet if, if, if um, things had went better with Victor, she would have magically had some keys somewhere. That's true. You, you are correct. Probably. <laughs> oh, so, so yeah, Anna rescues Dante, uh, and they get there, and Dante gets to stop Rosa as he's about ready to start the procedure on Lulu, and and it's like, it's like she's drug, she's, uh, I guess, maybe either faint being knocked out, or the drugs just wasn't, weren't strong enough, or what have you. And or, or or the drugs were strong enough, and Lulu just overcame them through sheer power of "Don't you fucking touch me." Yeah. Well, she is a Spencer. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the fact that that Stavros is gloating, and then all of a sudden she wakes up. Oh, arm of Cassidy. Nom. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So, and of course she. She starts calling out for Dante. He hears her convenience, but you know we we can let some conveniences slide. Yeah. He goes in there, big damn hero. They, they they face off with Stavros, and while we don't see the rest of the fight, we don't see it happen. Stavros is shot and presumed dead. I say. Which I'm like, okay. Because, because this guy is probably going to be able to come back from the dead at some point. And I'm like, okay, if you. Like, why bring him back if that's, like, all you're going to do with him? Yeah. I mean, it was similar when they brought him back uh, last year. It was, it was like, bring him back, gloat to Luke and Laura, watch him, you know, watch him obsess over Lulu because Ice Princess, young blonde woman, looks a lot like his lost lo- lost Laura. I was about to say lost Lenore. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and then... And it's just really, I mean, you could do much more with him. I mean, they would start, they were going to do more with Stavros, like, back in 2001 when they brought him back initially. Because he and Helena, they were going to take over the goddamn world. How? Of course! Uh-huh. Yeah. And how? Deadly toxin. I think it was a neurotoxin or whatever. And, and she was telling him all of this, yes, with this in your grasp, you will have the entire world in the palm of your hand. The entire world will be your plaything. And he's like, promise? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, wiping out the entire Spencer family was, was was a good way to sweeten the deal for him, too. Because that's how Stavros works, you know? He wants to get revenge on everybody who has wronged him and then subjugate the rest of the world. And now if he could just get rid of everybody that actually wronged him, whether they did or didn't, you know... If he can get past that, then maybe he might take over the world. You know, personally, I would put taking over the world a little bit higher on the list than re- personal revenge, but that's just me. Yeah, but that's the, yeah, but you're practical. Um, yeah. This is Stavros Kasadine. He is far from practical. He is a spoiled, okay, he is a spoiled royal pain of the Oedipus complex. <laughs> oh, God, 
god damn. Yeah. And yeah. And if, at the same time, um, Obrecht and Victor have their confrontation. Victor gets the results of the test back. He is definitely not the father. So nobody else will know because only he and Obrecht know. And when Anna comes in to arrest Victor, Obrecht pulls a gun on her. And at first I'm like, what the fuck? And then she surprised me by shooting Victor. You know, because, well, it's nothing personal. He just, we do not want Nathan to find out who his real father is. And based on her reaction, I think Nathan's real father is has got to be worse than both than both Victor and Faison. Well, that's that's what she said because uh, um, Victor asked her why, and she said because the truth is so much worse. Uh, but uh, my favorite thing about that scene was you know, Ulrich shoots uh, Victor, and then Anna, being Anna, leaves Ulrich alone uh, in the room with Victor's presumed corpse, mm-hmm. and uh, you know. Obrecht is there, kind of just going, oh, I'm so sorry, and, you know, holding his hand, and then she goes, a pulse! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not quite dead yet. <laughs> uh, speaking, just... speaking of dead bodies, Maxie and Nathan finally have their first kiss over the bodies of the Heralds. Like, what the fuck? A lot of people called, called, called them out on that. It's like, okay, you've got You've got a Harold Sr. dead because, you know, Nathan came in, played big damn heroes, and shot him in the back. That, well, you know, he was about to stab Maxie, so what else can you do? Yeah. And then Nathan and Levi, or, or, or Junior, get into it. And as Junior is about to get the upper hand on, on Nathan, Maxie literally stabs him in the back. Yes. That was – that made me so happy. I – I missed, I, you know, I missed seeing, like, the whole thing, finding out who Levi really was, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But he was so fucking annoying as a character when he first came on. Uh, seeing him die was really satisfying. Yes, and not only that, this, this dagger that she killed him with was reforged from her mother's Aztec jewelry. So I, I call it the Aztec dagger. Just boom! Oh, that is great. And they share a kiss, and then they start, you know, working on getting out of there, finding Dante and Lulu. But first they have a completely out-of-nowhere and pointless, this is how you use a gun scene. Yeah, and you would think Maxie, being raised by a former police, a now former police commissioner, been around the police, you know, police officers and other normal gun users pretty much all of her life you would think she would know how to use a gun. Lulu knows how to use a gun, but she is also Luke Spencer's fucking daughter. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That that was such uh, blatant padding. Yeah. I'm like, this is boring. Move on to something else. Yeah, it's like, okay, you are in the nest of... You, you are inside the, the headquarters of the World Security Bureau as ran by Victor Cassidyne. You are in a den of evil. Let's let's leave the cute for other times. Yeah. I mean, I can forgive the kiss right there at the end because it's like, you know, relief. They're temporarily out of danger. Holy shit, all these emotions running around. And and I at first at first I interpreted it as more of a just shut the fuck up kiss. But I, I actually rewatched it and it's like maybe not quite so much just a shut the fuck up kiss, but Still, it's like, I can still forgive it, even given the fact yeah. that there are two bodies on the floor. It's like, okay, <laughs> relief, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can forgive that. Oh. And, and showing Max how to use a gun. <sighs> you would think like, Max it, would know. Padding. Yeah. I mean, and, and I wouldn't mind it so much even as padding if they remembered, hey – Maxie knows how to you should know actually how to use a gun. She is she is the adu- okay. Her biological father is a World Security Bureau agent. Her mother, Aztec princess, who I would I think Felicia would know her way around a gun. I think, I but know. she was also raised by Max Scorpio, f- now former police commissioner, who definitely knows his way around a gun. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, I, I just, somebody dropped the ball somewhere? I mean, seriously? 
I thought I thought it was kind of funny that I think she said she had a can of mace or something. It's like, th th no, not going to work too well. But speak, oh, and with Anna walking in on her own, she she was conveniently backed up by turncoats from the WSB. Well, in turncoats meaning turning against Victor. Thank you, thanks to Robert Scorpio. Sweet. And and with their help, they kind of sweep the thing. They they just narrowly miss like Jason and Robin. Once, once Robin and Jason are both freed and they're skulking about, yeah, and everything. So, ah, oh yeah, I want see. My thing is, why weren't they showing Jason's face? I think, I think they just hadn't recast him by the time these scenes were filmed, or okay. or the guy that's going to be playing as Jason hasn't started working yet. Had not started working yet. So, we'll see what happens this week. Um. Yeah. But yeah, and of course they got go, got around with you know why he's silent because the unfree un, uh, blah, 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 the awakening the ventilator, process. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Robin is just like, God damn it! Although I do like the fact that she chewed him out for just like suddenly gunshot. Yeah, it's like you mother, what the fuck? <laughs> Can you warn me next time? Mm -hmm. And of course he's able to break a, like a small lock on 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 like an electric panel or whatever. You know, with, yeah, I, with his bare hands I, yeah, and a screwdriver. Scene, yeah, that scene, like, I'm, I, I was watching it, and I'm like, wow, wasn't it convenient that there just happened to be a whole drawer full of tools there for him to fuck with? You know, yeah. even though a drawer full of tools is not something you normally find in a fucking office, but whatever. Oh, but remember, this is Triton Clark. This is state of the art facility. You never know what shit they're gonna try and pull. <laughs> oh, and as they and as they're working on their escape, the door opens. Somebody comes in. I will get to that in just a moment. Back to Victor as he's as he's gasping his dying breaths or whatever. We find out he's a load bearing boss. <laughs> Victor is a load bearing boss, and that's why the name of this show is what it is. Victor it was a goddamn load bearing boss because with his last breath he pulled out a little thing, and, you know, he clicked it, and Obrecht is like, Oh shit. Get let's get you fuck out of here. Yeah, and uh, you know, it was you know, it, it, they're like, you know, we don't know how much time we have before the play, whole place self destructs. And uh, I was noticing that it was it was very polite of the building to wait until all of the main characters were out of the way before it blew up. Yeah. Apparently that was, uh, apparently the timer was uh, when all the main characters are free, then explosions. Yeah, or at least all of the main characters that we can see. That's true. Because I think with the uh, previews for, well, Monday's previews, showed uh, Robin and Jason somewhere else, so they obviously got out. Yeah. And, oh God, <laughs> don't know what's gonna happen to them. Yeah, but the, the, while the only the, the the only people we didn't really well, I I take that. Well, the only the, the people that we didn't we don't know uh, if slash how they got out are, are Victor the, and the Stopper. people who uh, who uh, got conveniently shot or stabbed. So, yeah, Victor Stavros and then Levi and his dad. Yeah. We don't know if they made it out, but knowing the Cassadines, they probably did. And that's because the other Cassadine has woken up. The bitch is back. <laughs> Fucking Helena. Oh my god. And Helena has the embryo that Stavros made with Lulu. with his him and Lulu. And I, I'm looking at that and I'm going, okay, predicting plot points... Nobody knows Helena's alive uh, and that she has the embryo. Somehow she's going to swap out Dante and Lulu's embryo with Stavros and Lulu's embryo. That's that's my prediction. You know what? That's probably going to happen. That seems like something Helena would do. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I remember back in the late 90s when Catherine Bell was, was this whole thing and her other son, Stefan, was, a main, was more of a main character in the show. Uh, Catherine had fallen from the, a parapet at Windermere, and she was presumed dead. In fact, for all intents and purposes, she was dead. But then Helena was seeing her, and she had slipped out of her room right before she died, before before Catherine had supposedly died. And, well, 
Um, it turns out that she slipped uh, Catherine something that made her appear to be dead, but not really dead. Redcon! Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and they they even set it up because the last before Catherine was pronounced dead, the last thing you saw was Helena just slipping out of her room. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, they did. Set, they set it up pretty well, I think, because it's like, oh shit. <laughs> and then uh, you know, the, the, the only thing about Helena's appearance was, uh, she seemed like really okay with her son being dead. Oh, because well. That's probably because she's got a way to revive him That's again. True. I mean, she hey, she spent a good, oh, what is it, 15, almost 20 years, you know, trying to revive Stavros the first time. She helped him get Nurse back to help when he fell down a supposedly bottomless pit. And, well, well, she and Stavros both got the treatment thanks to Victor and Crichton Clark. And, mm-hmm. by extension, thanks to Robin. Yeah. Although, as, as we found out, and that, that's actually something that I have been thinking of. I might have mentioned it on the previous show, too. But but when you look back at everything when, with Robin going to help Jason and everything there, and you look at it now and you realize that, you know, she, she could have been very much coerced at the same time. Because it's like, yeah, Victor was using the whole, you know, using her, her big heart to manipulate her. But then he also turned around and, you know, tried to kill, you know, sent a warning shot to Patrick to keep her in line. Because was that, was that what the accident was about? Yeah, that was, yeah, the accident was caused by Victor. Okay. Yeah. Victor was the one who put Rafe up to it, and it was because of the promise, you know, a supposed promise that Rafe would be able to see his long, well, I say long, year, year dead uh, mother again. So, you know, I mean, you do that to a teenager who lost his mother very violently, by the way. I mean, she was staked in the heart right in front of him. So, so yeah, that, you know, if you get the chance to see her again, hell yeah, you're going to jump at it. And then be racked with guilt later, because holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you realize you killed a baby. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, I I I just oh I'm I'm just waiting to see what happens when it comes out that Victor was responsible for it. Uh, well, for starters, uh, Sabrina's gonna feel really bad about trying to kill Ava's baby. Yeah, and it's like, I, and again, this is one of those things I've seen people bitch about this and be like, well, we don't like Sabrina going this way. It's like I don't like it either. But if you think about it, it may make a little bit of sense because, hi. She's go- she's still going through grief. For all she knows, it was Ava who tried to have Pat, you know, tried to have them run off the road, and thus is responsible for Gabriel's death. How does she know this? Carlos. How does Carlos know? Ava. She didn't tell him. She she just let him think that. Yeah. And she, yeah. She she just uh, quietly uh, took credit for it so that you know Carlos would keep his mouth shut and take the fall for AJ. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And and so, of course, false information in, false information out. So he tells her what he thinks he knows. He's not lying, uh, not intentionally. And now Sabrina got herself a couple of prescriptions, and she, she switched them around. And they spent all Friday's episode like, like okay, when is she going to take them? She you know, Like, they opened up, she was about to take it, then she got interrupted with something. I think it was Morgan. Yes. And it's yeah. right, and it's right before Sonny's men go and get ready to storm the penthouse. Yeah, and like okay, my my biggest issue with like Sabrina's plan mm-hmm. is she was doing all of like the medication swap and pouring out the real pills. She was doing that in the goddamn hospital. Yeah, and she kept like looking around to make sure no one was watching her. I'm like, bitch, you don't have to do that in the hospital. You can go home and do it. You can do it on the street. Yeah. Like, and you're looking suspicious as fuck. Yeah. Why? Well, why will, are you doing this in the hospital? I will give I will give the writers credit for this because I don't think they've written Sabrina as having much experience in doing this. That's so true. character wise, it's most likely inexperience. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> that 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 allows me to forgive that. Oh lordy. Mm. 
And she made this whole play, like, of, of apologizing to Ava, clearing the air with Ava, giving the pills to Ava because she didn't want to have Ava do a little bit more than what she needed, you know, for, for, for the pills or whatever. She's being nice. And then we turn around, we see the bottle that she still has may cause premature labor in pregnant women. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's like, goddamn, Sabrina. I mean, I, I, I admit, I, I'm going back and forth on Ava as a character it seems like, because on the one hand, she needs to get her comeuppance because, well, you know, she shot Connie in cold blood, and she got other people involved and got a poor guy killed for it, you know? So, yeah. you know, she needs to be brought down from that, but at the same time, her enemy is Sonny Corinthos, yeah. who needs to be taken down several pegs, <laughs> because I hate how smug he is when it comes to Carly. Yeah. I mean, Carly is no saint either. But Sonny, he, he just thinks that, oh, I want Carly, so I'm going to have Carly, and I don't give a fuck about Franco. I mean, yeah, Franco's had his – Franco's got his horrible past. You know, he has done some pretty heinous things, but so is Sonny. And at least Franco is, is trying to make a better life for himself now. He's trying to change. He is trying to be a better man, you know, and he is trying not to let his jealous urges get to him. Yeah. He is doing Although his damage. Yeah, and, and Sonny had uh, kind of an interesting monologue where he talked about how, oh, this is what Jason would want. That Jason would want me to manipulate Carly to get her get her away from Franco, and I'm like... Yeah, yeah don't even, dude. Uh... Jason was no saint either, but goddamn. Uh, I mean, okay, he was a mob hitman. Of course he's not a saint. But Jason, I think, as a character, from what I remember of him... He was a lot more heroic than Sonny. You know, I mean, I mean, he, being a part of the mob, being a hitman, of course, he's got to have his manipulations, you know, do all of that, and that's fine. But he's just, you know, he's not Sonny. He, he, he's, yeah. yeah. I don't want to punch Jason in the face as much as I want to punch Sonny in his everything. Because <laughs> that was the kind of day it was. Uh, I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. Or maybe it was Friday, I don't know. But it was one of those days where I just want to punch Sonny in his everything. Because this, all this, it seems like, with a lot of his characterization, all he wants is just control. Yeah. He wants to control the people around him. He wants control of Ava. Which, she needs to have her come up when it comes to killing Connie. Yes, I agree with that. However, yeah, I, I think, I, I honestly think it should come down to Ava and Olivia. Honestly, in what way? You just you know a bitch, a bitch fight. You know Olivia maybe shooting Ava. I don't know, but but you know I, I mainly because I don't want to see Sunny get the satisfaction of having the last shot. Yeah. Because fuck Sunny. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like he has his moments, but the majority of the time, fuck him. Yeah. Or in the case of Carly, don't fuck him. <laughs> it's like and. And, you know, speaking of fucking Sonny, yeah, you know, he's he's had this reputation of being extremely fertile, hence why <laughs> Ava is pregnant. We don't, we still don't know if it's, you know, Morgan's or Sonny's, but, you know, I, I think like years ago, they've noted on TV Tropes that Sam at one point had noted that, you know, Sonny can't keep it in his pants for five minutes and women end up pregnant all around, but that sort of thing. And, you know, just some good lampshade hanging there. It's like, yeah, yeah that's Sonny for you. <laughs> uh, it's like god damn it man and and yet he keeps coming back maybe it's because there are many fans that like you know like how he looks because he, he you know he's you know he's a decent looking guy you know he's in a suit he's cleaned up he cleans up nice etc 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 but that but if you look at deeper at his character it's like this is a horrible human being you know he's got his co honor of coat of honor which works in his favor a little bit but overall, I think Sonny is just horrible. <laughs> he is just is just again. He, he his, his head is, is bigger than the building his office is in. <laughs> it's like yeah, I want this. I want it this way. I'm gonna have it this way. <laughs> it's like <laughs> God damn it, damn it, Sonny. You know, and and the fact that he he ha has this feeling that he can control Carly's life like that and. Yeah. And of course, I want to slap Carly for letting him, because 
even though it's not very much, as we're seeing, she has let him do it. I mean, if she wasn't going to let him do it, she would not have wrapped her legs around him. <laughs> she wouldn't have done it. If she, was, if she was that bent on not being controlled by Sonny and what he does, she wouldn't have let him, you know? Yeah. And then if he Although, ended up doing yeah. it anyways, then he'd be a rapist, and then he'd be even worse. But yeah, and now everyone's get, everyone is basically finding out about Carly and Sonny. Uh, yep, Kiki knows, yeah. Morgan knows. How did, how did Kiki find out? I think Kiki found out... Oh yeah, Kiki found out by overhearing Sonny and Carly. Ah, okay. Yeah, she was going to go see Sonny, I think, looking for Michael or whatever, and she heard the two of them talking, and Carly's sitting there begging her, oh, please don't tell Franco, please don't tell Franco. And Kiki almost did, but Carly walked in, and Kiki had second thoughts. Yeah. And Kiki was like, yeah, I won't tell Franco as long as you keep your distance from Sonny. Yeah, which, so, yeah, Carly immediately doesn't. Uh <laughs> yeah. It doesn't help that Sonny just waltzes into the restaurant. Mikey owns the place. Yeah. By the way, he doesn't. It's owned by Carly and Olivia. So he does not own the place. Uh, and when yeah. Olivia was threatening to kick him out, it was Carly who stopped her. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, uh-huh. Okay. And then, uh, so, yeah, so uh, Kiki knows, and she told Morgan, but not Michael. Yeah, uh, and of course. Because yeah. You know, because Michael just has this rage when it comes to Franco, and so, you know, Kiki can't talk to him about it. And, but, you know, and so Rosalie conveniently overhears. overhears. And yeah. I love the lampshade hanging she has when when she's, when, they're, when she's talking. I think she was talking to Kiki directly about this, but I love the lampshade hanging of, of saying, yeah, if you're going to talk about stuff like that, go get a room. Don't talk about it in other place, in places where other people will hear you. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plot can... But yeah. yeah. And yeah. now Rosalie uh, at, is trying to drive a wedge between Kiki and Michael by being like, ooh, they have a secret from you, dun, 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 dun. And trying to make Michael think that Kiki and Morgan might be doing it behind his back. And I'm like, and like, it's getting to Michael. And I'm like, Michael, do you remember what happened a year ago? Yeah. Yes. Morgan and Kiki were married. Do you remember how that ended? Exactly. It ended with her dumping him for you at their engagement party. And Morgan immediately going upstairs and fucking Kiki's mom. Do you really think they're ever going to come back from that? No, not 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 that not in a relationship sense. Like <laughs> at least they shouldn't. Like it, it, there's there's no way. And Morgan is still you know obviously hung up on Ava. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, it's just it just would not work. And and even then, it's like, you know, what, what, what? Yeah, Michael, dude, you're smarter than that. And, and of course, Rosalie tells Nina about Franco. And Nina's like, oh, my God, I got to tell him. And so she does. Nina tells Franco. Franco doesn't believe her. Yeah. <laughs> or at least he's, tr he's trying really hard not to because, yeah. he's, you know, he's, ch he's trying to, you know, suppress that that side of him and really trust carly and but it's you know hard good to, on him it's really hard to when you walk into the metro Corps for your birthday you know talk to carly about the birthday party when uh sonny's right there yeah he's doing his thing on her like uh oh, shit. clearly hitting on her yeah uh yeah but yeah oh oh but yeah um you know rosalie is trying to you know be all sneaky and uh, get Kiki to, you know, get get Michael to recognize that Kiki's keeping something from him, blah, 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 blah. And Kiki thinks on her feet so well, and she's like, yeah, well, I was planning, you know, I was having Morgan help me plan, uh, you know, a first year anniversary surprise for Michael, but you just ruined it by, you know, basically being a meddling bitch. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what Rosalie is being paid to do. Yes. 
And, uh, like, I thought it was hilarious that Rosalie got so pissed and, you know, went to went to Nina to complain about uh, Michael's bitchy girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, Nina, what, what, what the hell? Yeah. But, but, you know, I mean, a lot of it can be written off as, you know, bitch be crazy. Yeah. But still, it's like, Kiki, really? I mean, I can understand going after Ava. Okay. Going after Silas. Okay. Going after Sam. Okay. I can understand Sam a little bit. And then, but going after Kiki. No. No. Well, and Rosalie keeps pointing that out, and Nina doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, although I will say, in, in Nina's uh, workout outfit looked really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, you mentioned Sam. Yes. Uh, I wanted to punch Patrick in the throat this week. In the throat? Why? In the fucking throat. Patrick knows that Jason is alive. He knows this. Mm -hmm. He knows this, and he still made out with Sam. Yeah. What the holy fucking hell? Yeah, it's just... uh... What... What the like? What the fuck are you doing? Like, wait. Uh, wait a minute. I thought I thought he was eventually told that Jason had died. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I'm a, I'm I think so. I think when he had found Robin there, he was told that you know, yeah, Jason was alive, but he's dead now. Oh, okay. That that excuses it then. Okay. Yeah. Never... Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That that would that would be my bad then. But yeah, That's you know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so Sam and Patrick made out. Yeah, it looks like they were gonna, and and it was because and it, it was let what led to it was a fortune cookie. Both of them got the same thing, you know, tried new experience, new thing or whatever, and it's like, oh hey, we got the same fortune cookie. Let's fuck. Yeah, and like he was like Patrick was going for it too. He had her shirt unbuttoned and everything, and then she's like, um, yeah, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> yeah, and and so they're like, all right, they go, they cool off, and Patrick confides in Liz, of course, and Sam confides in her mother, and and just for the record, I don't think I could confide in either of my parents about things like that, and it's not because I don't trust them or or what have you. It's just, I uh, you know, I don't care about their, you know, their their sex life, and they typically don't care about mine. So it's like, yeah, no it's, 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 it's a little awkward, and then like. Alexis was hilarious, in my opinion, because <laughs> Sam's like, you know, and then I started, and, and uh, Alexis is like, what did you do that for? Basically, she's like, come on, get laid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Next time he comes over, uh, next time I know he's coming over and I'm out, I would better come home to the smell of vagina everywhere. <laughs> vagina and semen. There you go. <laughs> you know, Matt, um... Sam didn't grow up with Alexis as a mother, so maybe that's why they can, you know, be a little more comfortable, because, yeah, they yeah. met when they were both adults. Yeah, that might be it. Oh, Lordy, but, but meanwhile, Alexis is going to be going on a date with Ned. Hi, what, what is this? What is this, uh, 1998? <laughs> oh, God, because I remember when I first started watching, Ned and Alexis were more of a couple. Okay. And they were gonna be they were gonna be ending up getting married or whatever, and she left him at the altar, because fears of commitment and everything. And they also were they also had a uh, you know kind of a foursome if you will, with uh, Jax, with Jasper Jax, you know Carly's ex husband, Ro- uh, not Rosalie, Jocelyn's father, mm-hmm. and uh, Chloe Morgan, who was a distant Quartermain cousin, who got, had her throat slit. No, she didn't have her throat slit. But uh, she was killed by Stavros. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, because she was dating Stefan at the time, and Stavros wanted to take away something precious from Stefan. Of course. Stefan, Stefan, however you pronounce it. Because, you know, that's how Stavros operates. Because he's a jackass. He, he's a murderous, Oedipus complex, royal pain in the ass jackass. Um. <sighs> God damn it, Stavros. Fuck <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I like it when they bring him back because I like watching Robert Keller Kelly just chew all of the scenery. He is I lo- hilarious. I love watching it, especially, oh, God, because my, my mind 
goes into two different places at once, and it kind of hurts. On the one hand, I'm enjoying the performance. I'm loving just just how hammy he makes it. But on the other hand, I realize that in universe, this guy is a, a very threatening motherfucker. Nine times out of ten, I have noticed if he wants something done, he has the means to get it done. Yeah. So just just like all the other Cassidines, if they want something done, it gets done. Speaking of other Cassidines. Well, Nicholas has now heard again that Spencer is, you know, he, he's, you know, Spencer's still worried about, you know, Luke going after Emma. Well, fake Luke going after Emma. And Nicholas confirms this with Patrick after Spencer mentions, you know, he told Patrick and, and Sam and all of them. And Nicholas is now suddenly taking this seriously. Yeah. Because it's like, well, to be fair, it has been months and Spencer is still shook up over it. And I guess that's the you know kind of clue that Nicholas has is like, okay, this this is definitely not his thing. This, this yeah. is not his imagination here. Of course, I was, I was pissed off that Nicholas didn't believe him in the first place, but that's... Yeah. yeah. Uh, God damn it. But, you know, hey. And Britt's still around with him, and oh my God, did you see her haircut? Yeah, it looked really cute. Yes. It's like, yee! Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, now, now we have to ask again: Who is Nathan's father? Dun, dun, dun. I mean, obviously, it's not Obrecht. Uh, not Obrecht. Of course, it's not Obrecht. She's his mother, and it's not Victor. It's not Faison. I mean, I wonder who. I mean, who could it be? I mean, could it be a distant Cassadine cousin that we don't remember, or maybe? Maybe. Oh, here's something that could be kind of dark. What if, you know, considering she has been involved with the Cassadines in the past. Oh, oh. What if Nathan is Stavros' son? Oh, God, that would be terrible. That would be <laughs> in more ways than one. Guess who else is Stavros' son? Uh, Nicholas. Yes! Ma. Oh, God. The levels, the incest levels would be through the roof. <laughs> and and it would be worse if it, well, okay, no, that would be the worst it could get. It wouldn't be much better if it turned out that she had an affair with Stefan, you know, Stavros' brother. That would still put the, the relationship a little too close, I think, for comfort. Uh, I don't know. It, ugh. Just Ugh. wow! I, I don't know. I'm I'm sure they'll retcon it eventually. And you know, my thing is, I I want to know if the writers have even decided who Nathan's father is. I don't know. Uh, I would like to know if if you're a writer for General Hospital, right into the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we would like to know. And then we would like to have have you guys on the show to to answer for some of, of some of your most um, what the fuck moments, you know, <laughs> like teaching Maxie how to use a gun. Really, she yeah. is she is the daughter of a WSB agent. She is the stepdaughter of a former police commissioner who got shot. Who, by the way, I don't think I mentioned it last week, but Matt got shot when when uh, Maxie and Lulu were kidnapped. You know, it was like a shoulder wound or whatever, mm. but. But, you know, so he obviously got better. And and so Mac and Mac, <laughs> you know, he recovers in the hospital. They, they fix the bullet up and everything. And he's out. He's already wanting to get up, get out of the hospital and go after Levi, you know, and, and, and his accomplice who ended up getting shot himself and getting put in the hospital. And Mac is just wanting to do all this, wanting to do all this. And everybody's like, no, you need to recover. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> uh brothers are alike because Robert Scorpio was the same way last year <laughs> when he came out of his coma Robert was like I'm gonna go find my daughter yeah oh god damn <laughs> oh the Scorpios uh. that's that's how they roll son that's how they roll <laughs> oh so oh god where where else let's see oh yeah so as I mentioned, as we as we talked about a little bit, Helena is back, and yeah. and 
And, and yeah, like you said earlier with the whole embryo swapping thing, I think she'll probably end up doing that before she reveals herself. Yeah. And this is going to play very interestingly, especially with the whole fake Luke subplot over here. That's just kind of simmering on the side right now. Because she is, you know, you know she would probably end up talking to fake Luke. At some point, because Tony Geary is supposed to be coming back from his vacation soon, and, and of course, Fake Luke will be coming up on, on the show a little bit more often, and and so of course, he's going to see those two characters interact, and Helena is going to realize, wait a minute, this is not Luke Spencer. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> and it's it's especially <clears throat> going to be telling, Sin you know how his how he's going to react to lulu being kidnapped nearly killed and nearly violated by stavros cassadine again stavros cassadine being one of luke's mortal enemies and not to mention the return of victor cassadine who was one of the original three brothers that was trying to freeze the world so so it's it's going to be interesting i want to see where they go with that because you know that's got to come up yeah Oh, uh, or maybe fake Luke is is whoever Nathan's real father is, whoever fake Luke is, because he he scares the shit out of Julian Jerome and Ava, and so he he's not exact. And of course he scares the shit out of Spencer, but you know, Spencer's also a kid, so it, it's just. It, so it's, Ava Ava knows that fake Luke is their boss now. Yes. In fact, she tried to work with him to, you know, to get a little bit more power within the organization, and he charged her with, you know, with uh, either getting the recording of Sonny confessing to killing AJ, you know, for leverage, or killing Michael because he is an obstacle to ELQ. Oh, that's nice. And she tried going with the latter, and then realized she couldn't do it, not just because of guilty conscience. Which she was overcoming for the most part. But then um, her mama bear tendencies kicked in. Yeah. Because, yeah, you don't, you don't sec, you know, you don't nearly rape her daughter. You don't do that. That's, no. It's just, no, no. Oh, did he get, did he get close again? No, this, no, Kiki was telling her, you know, oh, that was okay. from Kiki telling her. And she's, okay. Ava's just now finding all this out and she's pissed. So, Yeah. And so now both she and Julian, from the looks of it, I think she was trying to convince him to work together against him, against, you know, against fake Luke. Not sure. I don't remember how much that's panning out. I'll probably remember more if they bring it up when they go back to uh, bring up that particular plot line. Whether or not Ava loses her baby, I don't know. They, they still – it's one of those things where it teases, like, is she going to eat the pill? Is she going to take the pill? Oh. And the other big – one of the other big things that's going to end up happening in the next week, Franco's going to have a birthday party. And the moment Carly mentioned that, I'm like, yeah, shit's going to go down. Yeah. People are going to know that Carly just couldn't keep pants on around Sonny, and Sonny is just – well, he's the smug asshole who thinks he could just fuck any woman he wants, and it doesn't matter who she's dating – doesn't matter if she's supposed to be committed to the guy. You know, he wants Carly, he has Carly. You know, it's just... Uh, I mean, props to Olivia for, at this point, being more immune to his bullshit. <laughs> props to Olivia. Uh, but, because uh, he can't... Because, you know what, he's she is not taken in with the fact that, oh, yeah, we do have a son together, maybe I should fuck him, and, and all of that. No. No, she's not taken in by that. Carly, on the other hand, well, uh, <laughs> it, it's like really, it ta it it does take two to tango. Yeah. So, so I I find them both very much at fault. Uh, <sighs> God damn it, Carly and Sunny. So this is going to be fun, and even Michael's going to be there. Kiki invited him after Franco invited her naturally. And, well, well, Franco through Carly invited her, yeah, and and she told Michael she wants to go. She wants him to go, and he's like, okay, I'll suck it up. <laughs> and it's just, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah. 
Uh, and Nina, I will give her credit. You know, Franco does have a right to know. In fact, he should know. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I, I would like to know if my significant other was, you know, cheating on me with somebody else. I would want to know this. And then we could deal with it in whatever way possible. If that means ending the relationship over, then that's what it means. But we would need to know, so we would know there are issues, and work out those issues. Yeah. Of course, since this is a soap opera, we know what's going to happen. It's all going to come out of the party. Franco's going to explode. They're, he's going to get into a fight with Sonny. He and Carly are going to break up. I don't know what he's going to do. He's probably going to end up fucking Nina. Just mark my words. He's going to fuck the <laughs> hell out of her. I don't... Which? Oh, you know what would be great? What? If uh, Franco and Nina had sex and Nina got pregnant by Franco instead of Silas. <laughs> that would be. And that would turn the whole fact that Nina is currently going through menopause on its head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That would be a thing. That would be like, holy fuck. Franco is just that potent. How come he wasn't that potent with Carly? They use protection, that's why. Uh, you know, it's gonna, and it's going to be interesting to see Michael's reaction when the whole thing comes out. Because, yeah, he's going to be pissed that uh, Kiki didn't tell him mm-hmm. uh, about Carly and Sonny. But at the same time, it's going to be interesting to see what form that fight takes. Because, you know, his problem is with Franco. But in this case... Franco wasn't the one in the wrong. Yeah. It was Carly. Very much so. And it's just... Uh, I think if he's going to be pissed at Kiki, it's going to be, be be pissed at, you know, she felt she had to hide it from him. I think that's what's really going to end up pissing him off. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, at the same... But at the same time, I'm like, you know, Michael... Considering everything that happened when Carly was kidnapped, Kiki has a right to keep shit from you when it involves Franco. Because yeah. you go kind of fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, they, they, you know, in general, honesty is the best policy when it comes to relationships. But in this particular instance, I, I really am on Kiki's side. Yeah. I, I, I kind of – I'm honestly, I'm on both their sides, but – Yeah. So, you know, but I just also thought of something else. Everything goes down at this party. It comes out that Carly cheated – outright cheated on Franco with Sonny. Franco is not going to hold back anymore, and he is going to tell everybody there that Sonny killed AJ. Ooh, that's going to be awesome. I want to see this. I will I will I will make sure I have popcorn. I will make sure I have my drink, whatever that may be. And I will have lube because I'm going to watch that over and over again and <laughs> masturbate to it. Because that is going to be amazing. Oh. That needs man. to be happening. I, I really hope we're right about you're right about that cuz uh, yeah, that that would be fantastic. And uh, you know, Carly would have it coming. Sorry. Yeah, she would. Sonny has had it coming for months. Because have... fuck you, Sonny. Yeah. You know, you don't... You know, yeah, that's what I hate about him. He thinks he gets to dictate who lives, who dies, just because he's a mobster. No! Just because you... Just because you have the, the ability to find the loopholes in the law doesn't mean that you can break it willy-nilly. Well, he kind of does. He's a mobster. But still, <laughs> still, you know, you know he, he is – okay, imagine the Eiffel Tower or, or some other tall structure. I'm using the Eiffel Tower for, for this particular example. He is up there at, at you know, close to the top, either the tippy top or, or very close to it. He needs to be brought down, not necessarily all the way to street level, because street level he could very well die, and I don't necessarily want him to die. I just want him to be brought down to, like, like that that first level, like that first uh, yeah. uh, rung level or whatever. Yeah, you know, I, I know. All the way saying. down there. Yeah. So yeah, bring him down quite a bit, and he needs that. And this, if if. That comes out during this party. I think that is going to be a huge blow to him. 
Yeah. And if he ends up killing Franco over it, it is going to make him look so much worse. Well, and, uh, you know, finding out about AJ, you know, th- things are going really well for Sonny right now. Mm-hmm. So you know shit's about to get real. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, including uh, Morgan, you know, started to uh, kind of speak to him civilly. Uh, you know, things are going great with Michael. You know, when he goes and gets Ava, that's going to break things with Morgan. And when the truth about AJ comes out, that's going to break things with Michael. Yeah. Although I will also argue that, you know, AJ alone would probably break both of his sons. You know, Michael more than Morgan, obviously, for very obvious reasons. Yeah. But it would probably break Morgan and be like, what the fuck? You lied to him, too? You're covering shit up for him, too? Yeah. It was like, what the fuck, man? I want to I want to hear Morgan I either you know you know the actor who plays Morgan I want to see him like scream what the fuck at somebody you know, in you know preferably like in character like he's yelling at his dad like what the fuck I want to hear this <laughs> Okay so so we we are coming up on the last like 8 minutes or so 8 or 9 minutes of the show so here, so let's wrap up with everything that we do want to see like in the coming weeks, especially this week. Um, obviously, the big bomb that drops that that says, "Yeah, Sonny killed AJ, and everybody's going to find out, and Sonny's going to be knocked down to the first level of the Eiffel Tower. That's going to be great." Sorry. <laughs> do do we need to get some loop for you too? Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, we probably won't see much with Helena this week because that's how they bring her back. They bring her back and just a little bit, have a scene, you know, have a day with her, and then she's off for a while to mysteriously reappear elsewhere. That's how they've been doing it at least in the past year. Um, let's see. And, and of course, with everything having to do with the Cassidines, that, that's got to have some effect on Fake Luke, whether it's whether he's really committed to Sparkle Motion or he just is trying, but doesn't really it, it doesn't click. And mm-hmm. people who are most likely going to catch him in this are either Anna, uh, Tracy, Lulu, Dante, or or um, or, or probably one of the Jeromes. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, because Luke does have this reputation. He is a scoundrel, yes. But he, he's not the heartless bastard that this fake guy has been. Yeah. And I think that's something even Nicholas noted is like, yeah, Luke is a scoundrel. He's not a monster. Yeah. Because, uh, you know. Oh, God. So uh, let's see. Da-da-da-da-da. Patrick and Sam. Um. <laughs> ah, as far as them, let I, I don't. I, I mean, I care, but uh, at the same time, I don't care, like, what happens. Whatever happens, I'm going to probably enjoy. I don't have, like, expectations for them. And same with Alexis and Ned. I mean, it's nice to see the two characters interacting again. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like, oh, hi. Oh, hi, high school. (laughs) (laughs) How you doing? Hadn't hadn't seen you in a while. At least you were a happier part of high school. Um so yeah. see those two again, that'd be great. Now, now if they brought Jax back for a while, that'd be that would be awesome. Uh, it would be nice to have an an, an actual Aussie around instead of a fake Aussie. <laughs> uh, you know, well, well, Mac is technically an Aussie too, but you know he's lost the accent over time. I think the actor is not really an Aussie, but but the character is. Okay. So, but so okay, so we still have Mac around. But uh, let's see. Who else is there? Um, I want to know just what kind of stuff they were doing at Crichton Clark besides – oh, oh, that's right. That is one thing Victor did mention when he set off when, – when he decided to uh, you know, blow the load, so, you, so to speak, is he mentioned there was like biological uh, we- weapons. I think it was weapons or biological warfare or, or what have you. Yeah, something like that. And it's like, oh, shit, son. And yeah. you know they're going to have a backup for all of this shit. Yeah. You know they are. They've got backup facilities. They have to. Yeah. But with Victor gone and effectively not the head of the WSB, there's going to be a power vacuum. 
who's going to fill it? Is it going to be Robert or Frisco? Will Anna end up filling that position in the commissioner's job going oh, to God, somebody else? Please don't. Please don't make Anna the head of the WSC. <laughs> Bad enough at her job being, uh, you know, a local police person, police woman. Uh, yeah. You do not need to put her, you know, no. Don't, no. <laughs> no, and also no. <laughs> Although I will say, I wouldn't be surprised if, okay, a lot of it is writer-induced. I'm not going to lie there, but I'm willing to bet that some of the some of her restrictions does have to do with like local laws, you know, with with the fact that you know she has to be within certain bounds. The WSB no. doesn't necessarily have those bounds, so if like she wants to go and do something else in in the, you know, in the act of catching a bad guy or whatever, the WSB would allow her to have more power and more resources to do that. That's not no. That's not my problem with Anna. My problem with Anna is not her restraint. My problem is that she's a moron. That's where the writer induced comes in. Ninety percent of the time. So, that, like every once in a while, she'll have like a moment of brilliance, like that time that she was uh, interrogating Heather Weber and uh, got her to, you know, admit stuff by eating a sandwich in front of her. Like that. Guilty. That was a stroke of absolute brilliance. Yes. And. You, but Anna has very few of those, and yeah, writers, what are you doing I, with her? Come on, I I, I have strong feelings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, though I have, though I'm willing to bet that if they put her at the head of the WSB, the writers will suddenly remember that Anna is supposed to be a very capable woman and a very capable law enforcement agent, and they will start writing good things for her. I'm willing to bet. Uh, you know, I I would I would be okay with that. Yeah, I, I would too. Cause, cause... I, 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 I would like to see her be competent, but yeah, right now, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, and over the years, <sighs> she's been involved in in law enforcement. She's been involved in in international spy stuff, you know, that sort of thing, espionage. That's what I'm. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, you know, she's been involved in that stuff over the years, and she's, from what I understand, she's been fairly competent, you know, back in the '80s and the early '90s. So, you know, it's it's not like Anna doesn't have the capabilities of being a competent, you know, a competent officer, competent agent, whatever. The writers are just dumbing her the fuck down. Yeah. And and that's not necessarily cool. I know you need to do something like that for dramatic purposes, but you're making your officers look like idiots. And and of course, there's also the running joke. That seems to be going around in the show that yeah, that even the, some of the writers are lampshade hanging with with just depreciating remarks about the police department. Yeah. Thank you. Obrecht. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which which while it is amusing, you know, I think there is a better way to make the cops, you know, to 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 foil the cops when when necessary without making them look like complete idiots. There are ways to do it, and let's find them. Please, yes. please, let's. <laughs> I mean, it's just there, there are ways to do it. A lot of the ways they've been doing it over the past year, no, nah, not not really. You're making the cops look like buffoons, which makes for a great running gag. It does. Yeah, that's true. But it, it's, it's, you know, for characters like Anna, who, who has, you know, who is basically a legendary character on the show, not nearly on par with Luke... But she's legendary. She's been there for a while. Same with Robert Scorpio. Same with Frisco Jones. Max Scorpio. You know, they've been around for a while. You would think that they would be able to maintain the same level of competency. You know, I mean, Nathan, you know, having moments of incompetence or whatever, that's more understandable because he's less experienced. He's younger. Mm -hmm. That is a little bit more understandable. Even even if they introduced him as this you know really kick ass cop in the beginning, you know he is still young and inexperienced. So it's it's more excusable for him to make stupid mistakes, and even Dante to a degree, because he is he is still considerably you know younger than Anna, younger mm -hmm. than some of the other vets that have been around, and he has he does have his cowboy cop tendencies, which can get him into trouble. <laughs> so, you know. So that's a little bit more understandable. But Anna, with the experience and the age that, that you know comes with the experience and everything, you would think she would know better in a lot of cases. 
Oh. You would think, but, you know. <laughs> and I went on way too long about them. And, and um, when it comes to, like, speaking of, like, Ava and Julian and Sabrina and all of them, I hope that Ava's baby is not killed off by, in this way. I, I, just I, think, really it, I think it would be more interesting uh, if the baby lived. Yeah. Uh, because then you'd have then you'd have the paternity test, which to Morgan's credit, when he went to go see Ava, one of the things he brought up was uh, you know a paternity test, and Ava's like you know that's a little invasive, and I don't want to take any risks, and tells him about you know her her little atta- her her little scare mm-hmm. the previous night, and Morgan is like okay that's cool, you know he yeah. he, he understood, and I was like that was really good of him, so so I I I, I applaud Morgan. Yeah. I applaud the writers for writing Morgan that way. That is good. Uh, and and I want to see where that goes. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> going to find out what Sabrina did. Watch it be Felix. That would be Fe- fun. Oh, God. And Felix can't keep his damn mouth shut. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, speaking, speaking of Felix, mm-hmm. um... I don't know uh, if you follow all of Channel Awesome, but uh, one of uh, the new reviewers, Iros, he reviewed this movie, uh, Reggie's Prayer. Felix was totally in it. Sweet. I I was like, hey, I know who that guy is. (laughs) Yeah, you're going to see a lot of that between just soap opera actors in general. You're going to see a lot of that. You could even see it in Doctor Who. That's true. So, you know, (laughs) you you can see him anywhere. (laughs) Oh, but with that, we are out of time for this week. Um, if we wanted to find Namio here on the social media, where could we find her? Uh, you can find her on Tumblr. Uh, the username is uh, Namio's Corner. You can find me on Twitter uh, at Naomi Washburn. And you can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. What? So, all right, and here we go. A little bit more rambling from me that we'll get out of here. And you can find me on the interwebs at, on Twitter and on Tumblr at Gomer21XX. You can find my stuff at RTGomer.com and Nerdvice.com, both sites, both sites also which have a Facebook page each. Go check them out, like them. Uh, my site, RTGomer Productions, also has its own Tumblr. I believe it is... Uh, um, I'm getting to it. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm having to do it kind of by memory here. But it is rtgomerprod.tumblr.com. There we go. And, and of course, this very show also has its own Tumblr page, which I really kind of need to spruce up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it is portcharliepodcast.tumblr.com. Uh, all the new episodes go up there. I'm going to try and be a little bit more active with it in the coming weeks as well, uh, as I need to do with all my show pages. Um, but you can find them all there. It's great. You know, you can ask questions of us, and and we'll we'll answer them on the air. Although, of course, with this show, you know, keep them about General Hospital and the actors around it, please. You know, because this is what the show is based. For. This is what the show is for, anyway. Mm-hmm. So, um, so anyway, uh, also, if you like this show and the other shows that I do uh, on the internet, and you want to help give a little bit back, you know, for future productions, you know, things like equipment upgrades, um, cost of living, once I actually am able to pull in enough this way, um, just head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. You can pledge as little as $1 per uh, production. Um, and just bear in mind, if you do pledge, I do like at least 12 to 20 productions in a given month. And I mentioned this because I did have one guy who went in at one level and didn't set his own cap and he got charged quite a bit <laughs> at one month. And it was like, Oh, uh, but you know, everything was cool. The money went to good things. So, so we're all cool on that. Uh, so, so yeah. So if you do go to my Patreon, don't forget to set a cap if you're working on a tight budget. Um, and, and that's true for anything on Patreon, but again, that's, yeah, again, that's patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And of course I would also, I would be very remiss if I did not mention my lovely girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who Ooh. also has her own Patreon page, patreon.com slash Becky hop, which also has links to her personal webpage and to her DeviantArt account, where you can look at all the artwork she has to offer, all of her animations, and if you throw enough money at her through Patreon, she will do a 30-second animation for your faces. That is right. 30 <laughs> seconds of award-winning animation for Ooh. your face, if you throw enough money at her. 
So, uh, again, that's patreon.com slash Becky Hop. And finally, we do have this uh, Go- GoFundMe fundraiser going on right now. And that is for uh, site space because I upload all of the MP3s for the show directly onto the site at rtgomer.com. And, well, we're running a little bit low. We need a little bit of extra money to to get the uh, site upgrades that we're needing. Uh, right now, we've got we've raised uh, twenty dollars so far as of this recording. Hopefully, I want to hit you know I want to hit uh, at least two hundred to three hundred. Uh, the cap is set at five hundred, but you know that's also if if we that's that's kind of a, a padding thing. If we get up enough to where we get the uh, the space upgrade that I really, really, really want and still have a little bit left over, I can use that to like commission some new artwork and that sort of thing just for the site and make it look a lot prettier than what it does now. So uh, anyway, that, that can be found at rtgomer.com. It's pinned right to the top of the, of the uh, front page. You can't miss it. Uh, go check it out. And if you can, throw some money at it. And I have promised that if we reach $100 in the GoFundMe campaign, I will do kind of a, a blindish you know, kind of semi-blind uh, rage run of I want to be the guy, one of the you know you know probably the most frustrating platformer ever. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so yeah. If you want if you want to see that, go over there again. It's it's pinned to the top of the main page on rtgomer.com. Can't miss it. Go check it out if you want to help with web space or whatever. Um, so that's all of that. So I am done with the rambling with all of my stuff. I need to organize this a little bit better. But I'll, I'll see what I can work on over the next few weeks or what have you. Anyway, I'm done rambling. Thank you guys for listening and listening to both of us ramble and go on for the past hour. I have no idea how long this went over time, but hey, you know, that <laughs> happens every week anyway. Yeah. So, so anyways, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.